I guess we are now live. Um, so Joseph, thanks for being here. Um, thanks for your talk concerning the hyperdrive. Um, we already had some, or we already have a lot of questions here. And I guess I would start with, uh, let's call it the difficult, the most difficult one. So when you were developing hyperdrive with your colleague, um, what do you, or what, what have you learned the most? I have learned how much faster and more enjoyable the development of this project can be with talented people uh, working by my side, like Jonas and and Adam and Prot it's, and Mauve. It's been really a pleasure to work with these folks. So you, I, so you have started at first on your own and then probably pushed it somewhere in open source, or how was uh, how did it develop? your development experience. <laughs> a few years ago, we started looking into using peer-to-peer -peer technology for um, sharing sharing all kinds of information. And we came across Mauve Signweaver, who was recommended to us um, by a mutual friend. And um, we started working with Mauve. And then about a year ago, we started looking into using Emacs, uh, the peer-to-peer software so that we could um, make use of all of the powerful things that Emacs already does um, with org mode and other packages. Um, and then we started working with Adam and Prot and Jonas. Nice. Um, so we are skipping to the next um, question. So um, to read it out, I use multiple computers and my partner also would like access to my notes. So two questions at first. The first one, um, how well would you uh, would this work with using this to edit my Zettelkasten hyperdrive using multiple computers? Hyperdrive is single writer um, currently. So what that means is that if you have a hyperdrive that you've created, you're the only one who can make changes to it. And that's limited right now to editing one hyperdrive from one machine. Um, in theory, you could use the same private key and write to it from multiple machines, but you would have to make sure that you um, sync it down on both machines and didn't make concurrent writes because then you would fork the history of your of your hyperdrive and that would be bad. Um, but we've spent a lot of time um, making links to hyperdrives uh, work well, relative links within hyperdrives to other files inside of your drive. So you you should be able to uh, with some exceptions, um, just take your personal information management set of org files or whatever it is that you have um, and upload them into a hyperdrive if all of that is publicly available or would be good to share publicly. Um, and you can make that available for other people to link to. Um, so you can have multiple different hyperdrives that link to one another. So it's like a huge network of hyperdrives um, connected to each other in some way. Yeah. So that's kind of neat and kind of cool. Um, there was a follow-up question or the second part of the question. Um, yeah, okay, then using the same hyperdrive is probably not possible, but the interlinking would be the best way to do it. Um, there was a question concerning how they should install it. So what would be a good way of getting hyperdrives if you do not want to install NPM and have a binary? Could you compile it with Deno or Rusk or Zig or Go? Um, CLI alternative tool, I would prefer to download a single binary. Yeah, doesn't make well, sense. There's, last part. there's something that um, Jonas was playing around with using Geeks to install Hyper Gateway. So the way that, the way that hyperdrive.el, the Emacs package works right now, is similar to the way that the transmission Emacs client for BitTorrent works, where you have a, a client in Emacs that connects to a daemon that is a separate process that's running on your machine, um, the, the transmission daemon. Um, but in this case, we have Hyper Gateway, which is running as a daemon on your machine, and then hyperdrive.el connects to that daemon and sends requests, and all of the hyperdrive stuff under the hood happens um, with her gateway. Um, but so that package can, or Hyper Gateway, the program can be installed. Um, the easiest way is to just download it from the, the GitHub releases. 
You could also use NPM to install it. Um, and then the third option that we've been playing around with is uh, Jonas was writing a little script to install it using Geeks since Geeks now um, comes with Node 18. And so you should be able to install it using Geeks. Right. Thank you. Um, we have two people here joined with microphone. Do we have now any question to to Joseph or just here for chilling out? I guess it's a no. Plasma, yeah. What a, what about using uh, having some of the information being private in the hyperdrives? That's not what we have been focusing on um, at this point. At this point, what we've been working on is mainly using hyperdrives for a public forum type tool. Um, but you could encrypt those files if you wanted to. You can also just, you know, a, a poor man's security would just be to share your hyperdrive link only with those people that you want to have access to your drive. Um, but the way that it works right now is anyone who has the link to a hyperdrive can access its content, so long as there are peers available on the network who can serve it to you. Any follow-up question from your side, Plasma? Uh, I had one. I'll, uh, I just have to remember it. If you remember it, just feel free to interrupt me. What about uh, working? I looked at this before. What uh, What about if I remember correctly? It doesn't do as well with large files. So if you're going to store two hundred gigs of video files, stuff like IPFS works a lot better, or BitTorrent. This is are you you were you using the any way of using multiple protocols for stuff like that? Or what were you doing with, or were you just doing the small files with the same protocol? Or I would love to see an IPFS client in Emacs as well that could interface with Kubo or some other IPFS daemon. And I think that those could work really well together. We mostly have been playing around with sharing relatively small files um, up to hundreds of megabytes or maybe a gigabyte. Um, we haven't played around yet with hyperdrive.el, the Emacs client, testing that with, with HyperGateway. But um, there may be other experiments that have done that have that have been done that that show that that works well. The main thing is that IPFS uh, uses content addressability to reduce duplication of the content. Whereas in Hyperdrive, if you upload the same file with the same contents twice, now you have double the content being stored in your hyperdrive. It's not deduplicated. Um, you, can, you can always clear out part of the history of your hyperdrive, um, but IPFS has really good built-in deduplication, whereas hyperdrive does not. I have a question. What about the... like commenting on other, like? If you have a couple of different uh, hypercore blogs, what about like commenting between them? Like, you have some people who have a commenting form on Reddit for their blog posts. So, Move Signweaver has been doing a lot of work recently um, with the distributed press API to integrate ActivityPub with these peer-to-peer uh, -peer technologies. And uh, Move can give you more information about that. Um, but there's another feature that we'd like to add to hyperdrive.el, which is uh, peer discovery using the swarming feature that, that Hypercore, uh, Hyperswarm offers, where you'd be able to say um, that my node, my peer-to-peer -peer node is interested in Emacs and free software as topics. And those would be two different topics. I would advertise on the network that I'm interested in those topics. And I would be able to discover other peers on the network who have also advertised that they're interested in those same topics. And then they would tell me, hey, here's the public key of my hyperdrive. Come check it out. I have posted information about those topics. 
And so in that way, you'd be able to, in a distributed fashion, discover other peers on the network who are interested in topics that you're interested in. Something that would be useful uh, in addition to that idea is like, if you had your Emacs Zettelkasten and uh, publish, like let's say you have some private data, you make sure that that's scrubbed out before it goes to your hypercore. And then you have another part of it that gets turned into a website for, that's also given to other hypercore clients, but you'd rather give the Emacs users the org documents. And then you also publish some of them on a website. So everybody, as much people can get it as possible. And then you, a way of figuring out who you'd want to do, or like if you're an Emacs user, maybe figure out that they're all related to each other, but you want to get the org mode documents because you're using Emacs. This yeah, is an extension of yeah, maybe, your side note, maybe a side note, we have four minutes here on before we switch into the next track, just to let you know. Thank you. So the hyperdrive mirror feature that we added um, would allow you to selectively choose which files you want to share in a hyperdrive. So with Prot's denote file naming scheme or Carl Voigt's file tags naming scheme, you could just specify a regular expression um, and you could say, I want to share um, out of my, my directory of org files, I want to share only those files that have been tagged as public. And then, you, or only those files that have been tagged as Emacs. And then only those ones would get uploaded into your hyperdrive. Or exclude all, in any of the ones that say private. Yep. Right. Mike had a question. I, now it's your... Yeah, I have a question for the um, hyperdrive. So I just, maybe I missed it and you haven't put a link. Uh... Oh, Michal, we can't hear you. Heard you for a second. Can someone hear me? Now oh, we can. Yes? 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 OK, I have yep. no idea what happened to my microphone, but now it's back. <laughs> you can see the microphone on the top of the screen, so. Yes, thank you. OK, I have a question to Hyperdrive. Is the Hyperdrive a find on the whole punch point, uh, point TO? Whole, or is it just another hyperdrive? That's exactly that's exactly the project that we're using. So the whole punch team has released hyperdrive and other hyper core libraries as free software libraries that that you can use. And so Mov Signweaver, the project that Mov is working on, Hyper Gateway, depends on those libraries, and it makes it easy for you to build other clients like hyperdrive.el, which connect to the hyperdrive network. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. Thank you. And what uh, did make you choose hyperdrive for this Emacs project? Mainly the fact that the drives are mutable, which is makes it distinct from IPFS or BitTorrent, where when you share some piece of content, you um, you're stuck with that static piece of content, which works well for some cases. But if you say you have a, a, a Zettelkasten or you have a set of org files that you want to share with people, um, you want to be able to update those, those files and have other people pull those updates from you. And so Hyperdrive allows you to have these mutable sets of files that you can share and use the same link for other peers to pull the latest changes from you. Also, it's versioned, as we showed in the, in the video, which is really helpful for um, having community deliberations and community discussions where you want to be able to reference some something that somebody said in the past and not have it get deleted or changed or something. We are now switching the talk, so just for letting for letting you know if you want to say something now, too late. Um, the BBB room is still open, so you can still discuss. There's also a lot going on 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 the on the pad. Oh. Um, so, um, but you can also discuss here inside and answer the pet questions maybe later. Yeah, there are there are good questions. Just so I, oh, go ahead, please. Are we continuing here on the pad? 
I can hear yeah. you. Yeah. So the question, the question, the question I had on the pad was, um, would it make sense in any sense to put a uh, a fuse interface or put the you know, POSIX, POSIX semantics in front of this at some point? Yeah, that would be that would be cool. It's kind of a similar similar question to any plans for a tramp interface. Um, there was a project that the HyperCore um, hole punch team was working on a, a year or more ago that provided a fuse interface. Um, and I think it didn't pan out, um, but it's a good idea. Same with the, with the tramp interface. It seems like uh, a good idea that would um, make it possible to uh, more easily hook into the built-in Emacs functionality for, um, for example, like uh, incremental uh, file name completion, which we don't currently support in hyperdrive.el. Um, so I'd, I'd love to have feedback and, and design ideas for those those projects. Yeah, the, there's just the, everything in Emacs just sort of assumes the file system is there and, and usable um, in that way. That's all. Yeah, that's a good idea. An idea for the privacy type thing is sync thing links. Because I think you can set up sync thing in such a way that you that you have the private networks that other people can't actually get access to. Hmm. I did not know that that was possible with sync thing. I'll have to look into that. At least I think it is anyway, because yeah, you there's ways you can you explicitly authorize devices. Yeah, right. So you, you I think you could actually set it up in such a way that you can have private stuff and links and then that might be a way that you can get a completely distributed zettel cast and with private notes yeah good idea there's a question in the pad about dat rs a rust version of hyperdrive i had not heard of that um so i'll have to look into that if you had your druthers, what would make your work on hyperdrive.dl easier? Um, it's it's been a lot of fun. I would love to have more user feedback. That's that would be my my wish. I tried putting a Git repo in Hyperdrive. Does it work well? I don't think that would work well because, uh, as I mentioned a moment a few moments ago, the data that you put into a Hyperdrive is duplicated. So um, if you had the whole work tree in Hyperdrive, every time you made a change and saved it, it would be uh, duplicated. If you had just a, a bare repository, um, I don't know, try it. They're trying to solve the same problem, but one of the optimizations they have for being able to view a whole bunch of people's data is, the, is they made shallow clones a lot easier, right? Would you phrase that again, please? So like Git and uh, Hypercore, one of the things they do is they allow you to have a whole history of every single change for a uh, data set, uh, Zettelcast and uh, project. But one of the optimizations Hypercore did to make it more uh, network web friendly is the, they made the shallow clones work a lot better and a lot, yeah, they made that work a lot better so you don't have to download every single thing for every single project. And because they both are implementing the Delta upgrades, I don't see how they could work really well together, at least from what it looked like to me. Can't hurt to experiment. But yeah, I would, I would, I would agree with you. Is data transferred between nodes in the clear or encrypted? Um, that's a that's a good question. I don't know um, how it's encrypted. Uh, I don't. I wouldn't recommend sharing sensitive data uh, with Hyperdrive right now. I would recommend if you want to play with it, have it be something where you're expecting the data to be uh, shared. 
Is there a searchable There's catalog? Also the data in transport versus data at rest. I'm pretty sure the data at rest wouldn't be encrypted. Right. Right. So that you could separate that into those two questions. Right. Is there a searchable catalog of hyperdrives? So that's a, a thing, an idea that that we've been uh, mulling over as a future project, which would be a distributed trust network for discovering peers that are um, trusted for a particular topic. And we actually made a demo video of a previous prototype um, that's available on the Ushin Hyperdrive uh, that you can watch that shows the basic idea. But the, the idea is, is just that you would um, have a list of peers that you think are worth listening to or worth reading um, for a particular topic. And those peers would have peers that they think are worth listening to for that same topic. And so you would say, if I'm interested in Emacs, I want to see all the peers that um, I trust for the topic Emacs. And if, um, say, Adam Porter shows up in my list and Adam Porter trusts Jonas and Jonas trusts Prot, I would be able to read hyperdrive information from all of those people um, by looking at the indirect relationships um, that, that I have by following the chain of, of relationships, kind of like a web of trust. Um, and so it would also allow you to uh, have an, a network of peers that you trust to block other people on your behalf. So it would be useful for subjective moderation where you can remove spam and, and bad actors from the people that you follow without having to delegate that powerful responsibility to some third party um, in a permanent way where that third party might abuse that power. So it, it allows you to um, share, share your list of trusted peers and, and your list of blocked peers with other people in a peer-to-peer in a -peer way. Have you ever looked at GNUNet? It kind of does some, it's, trying to do something weird with the internet where it redesigns it from the ground up to be here to peer I, local first or something like that. I would like to know more about GNU net. Yes. I, I have heard of it, but I, I haven't really researched it. If you edit a file on the hyperdrive, then edit the same file on the local mirror, how is the conflict handled when you sync the mirror again? So I think if I understand the question, um, the answer is that you, you can't edit the file in two different places, um, I think is the answer to the question. If you were to manually copy the private key from one machine onto another machine, then you you could cause a a conflict like a, a like a merge conflict, um, but you would have to go out of your way to do that, and it's not it's not handled. I think the Hypercore Hole Punch team has another project that they're working on that would um, it's called Autobase that would merge those conflicts, but um, we're not using that right now, and I, I think it's in early development still. So there might be a solution in the future. What's a surprising change of thoughts or what's the most interesting thing you weren't expecting to discover while developing this? like change of thoughts on how you write or I don't know. Well, I'm, I'm relatively new to Emacs and to Lisp and uh, really to programming in general. 
And so it's been a fantastic learning experience. Um, Adam, Alpha Papa, Adam and I have been doing a lot of pair programming sessions where we work together and I get to learn from him. And we've had meetings with, with Jonas and Prot and, and uh, meetings with Move where it's it's a fantastic learning experience for me to discover how to build software in a in an efficient and intelligent way. It's it's a huge pleasure. If there are no more questions, I just wanted to encourage everyone to try it out and to uh, let us know what you think. It would be really helpful to have. Um, some feedback from from people who are using it in new and creative ways that we haven't anticipated. Um, hi, I'd just like to say that I, I tried this new thing called hyperdrive.el today, and I think it's pretty cool. Good job. <laughs> Who's that? <laughs> <clears throat> Sorry, that was somebody else. Hey, Joseph, how's it going? Oh, hey. Oh, Good talk today. You. Oh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful. Well, I'm going to say goodbye. Thank you. And thank you for your questions, Plasma Strike. Yep. I know that I've met you before. Appreciate your, your questions, your thoughts. Oh, by the way, Joseph, we have our um our first I don't know if our first new user, but we have the first link being shared uh, to a hyperdrive file in the chat, and I loaded it, and it works, and it's funny too. It's worth looking at. So, oh, I think it's frozen. I don't know if anybody can hear me. I can. Uh, okay, cool. The, the browser's frozen. It's it's not. Uh, okay, it just unfroze. Um, anyway. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, uh, I, by the way, I, I enjoyed your talks about uh, hyperbole. I'm going to rewatch those later when I get a chance. So it's nice to meet you too. I, uh, Bob is a really great guy to work with. I owe him one. So. Mm -hmm. Definitely a lot of interesting people. Yes, sir. All right. You have a good Maybe. one. Enjoy the conference. Will do. I like the insistence on local first. Feels like it's a good dovetail with the hypercore. Yeah, yeah. I think there's a lot of um, a lot of interesting possibilities to build on this. Uh, we have some plans that we uh, will get to later this, well, in the coming year, um, and uh, we'll see where the the hyperdrive people, you know, upstream how have they develop it as well. And uh, yeah, so exciting times. <laughs>